Tongue Tied, Bubbo's Tale by Daryl F. Mallet. Thwip, a long prehensile tongue quietly snaked out from a warty mouth, slurping up forgotten tidbits and dropped crumbs. But while the tongue was active, so were the bulbous purple eyes atop the green head. From the shadowy alcove where he crouched beneath the still warm ovens, Bobo observed the goings-on in the kitchen. Throughout his long career as a spy and assassin, and in dozens of places not unlike this one, he had seen similar occurrences. Gartog, one of the huge security guards, was questioning Reese. A body lay at their feet. A thrill of glee ran through Bubbo's tongue, tickling the roof of his mouth, as he contemplated the Gamorian guard clubbing the Grand over the head and hauling him off to the dungeons to await the hut's punishment. Bubbo didn't like the work with the Granish operative. The three-eyed being was too unprofessional, too unbalanced, too emotional. He relied heavily upon other people rather than his own abilities. And when he got nervous, he consumed large quantities of inebriants. And besides that, Riyiz just tasted wrong. Babu's tongue curled in disgust as the three-eyed idiot managed to convince the dim-witted guard of his innocence. Someday you'll get yours, he thought as he turned and shambled off into the ventilation shaft behind the ovens. As he made his way through the stone and metal shafts, all the while searching for a delicious Jawa or perhaps catching salacious crumb alone, he reflected on the current contract. While only a minor player this time, Bubbo was concerned about being exposed by his colleagues' seemingly endless ineptitudes and the hut's rage was something to be feared. Bubbo knew he was being used by Reese and several others. They, along with most of the universe, looked upon his kind as nothing more than drooling, mindless, bug-eating frog dogs, a reputation which the species did nothing to correct. In reality, they were some of the most mentally competent beings in existence. At least, Bubbo thought so. Thus, when he had arrived on this sand and lizard-infested planet several years ago, Bobo had taken great delight in discovering the Boomar monks insisted in this very citadel. It was to them he would turn now, as he did always, in his need for enlightenment. And if that failed, he had one last card to play to ensure the Reese would take the fall. The air was cooler below ground level, and a hint of moisture tinged the air. Approaching footsteps caused Bobo to withdraw into the shadows and shield his mind. Because everyone thought him a dumb animal, he normally didn't need to hide. He could merely shamble along with no fear. But he identified this distinctively soft tread as Bib Fortuna's. Jabba's major domo was always lurking in the lower depths of the palace, mining what information he could from the humanitarian Boomar. And the Tweelik's mental control was incredible. Not quite the level of the Boomar or the Jedi, but enough to frighten Bubbo into erecting shields. He knew the Tweelik was up to something. He suspected Fortuna was blackmailing the monks into doing his bidding, but while he respected the monks, Bubbo wanted no part of any of it. When the hut's chief lieutenant had passed, Bubbo continued down the corridors, easily avoiding the many mechanical spiders containing the disembodied brains of the monks. He went directly to a small cavern off the beaten track and entered the darkness, feeling his way to the waiting area. A dim light slowly illuminated him as he sat down. After a few moments of waiting, another shaft showed a large brain encased in a jar of nutrients. Welcome, Bubbo Cellular. The brain used Bubbo's formal name and spoke directly into his mind without flashing lights or sparkles, as Bubbo had seen in several cheap hollows. The deep, cheerful voice resonated throughout his body, reassuring and relaxing him. Greetings, Evlo Natali. Bubbo responded, a bit awed, as always, by the disembodied voice. What may I tell you, little one? asked the enlightened Boomar. Bobo decided on a roundabout approach. How may I control my feelings and accomplish my task? Killing Jabba, you mean. Bobo involuntarily let a mental gasp escape. So much for the roundabout approach, the monk's brain laughed as Bobo asked, You know? We live within a den of thieves, little one. The voice paused a moment. Why do you want this? Bobo croaked aloud in his own laughter. For the money, of course. But what do you really want, Bubbo Celiar? I seek to learn. Unlike most of my brethren, I do not seek such abstract concepts as truth and enlightenment. I am looking to amass as much information as I can, something I would be unable to do in my body, for it would die after less than a century. This way, I can remain alive for millennia, learning and growing mentally, and then be returned to a corporal existence whenever I choose. Bobo mentally snorted. But you've always been a bit... 
Unorthodox, my teacher. Whatever do you mean, little one? Came the laughing response of the monk's brain. The dramatic flair and aesthetics of the lights, for one. The fact that you still speak in sentences and whole thoughts rather than a single word and images. Bobo responded earnestly. It is necessary when dealing with the rest of the world. I do not believe one should learn in a vacuum. And in this pursuit, I am much better served in my enlightenment by conversing with tangible creatures like yourself. So, the final question, my teacher, is what should I do? For all my knowledge, little one, I have absolutely no idea. When word of Jabba's accident at the great pit of Carcoon reached the palace, Bobo was somehow not surprised when the monks suddenly appeared from everywhere. Something in his reptilian brain had suspected that they would move against the current inhabitants of the palace. He knew what was coming, but unlike Bib Fortuna, whom Bobo could hear mentally screaming from another part of the palace, Bobo didn't mind. He was delighted to know that Reese had been aboard the sail barge when it had exploded over the Sarlacc. Nevertheless, Bobo had seen Reese shamble aboard the craft, muttering something under his breath about figuring out what to do as he went along to witness the execution of the rebels, irate beyond rationality for what he had done. Thinking about that, when the monks finally lifted his brain from his cranium, Bobo's last tangible act was to emit a croaking laugh from his body. What's so funny, little one? came the deep voice of Natalie in his mind. He hesitated, knowing most of the monks frowned upon the concept of revenge as a useless act, especially when one could spend eternity contemplating the secrets of the universe. He hoped his mentor would appreciate the joke. I ain't the detonation link, my teacher. The crucial part in Rigi's plan. Silence. Then, You what? Disbelief. Bobo related the tale of Rigi's final hours in the palace. You lawsome two-eyed toad! Reese was losing it again. Bubbo set crouched in yet another ventilation shaft. In front of Bubbo set the detonation link, the missing piece of the bomb. Bubbo had placed the object just out of reach of the drunken Reese's outstretched hand. I'm gonna feed your miserable hide to the rancor! You and what army, you filthy idiot? Bubbo had drawn the granish operative slowly from his quarters, dragging the bit of electronic machinery quickly out of reach. After toying with the inebriated Reese for almost an hour, he had withdrawn to this secure location. As the Grand reached in with a long kitchen spoon, Bubbo flicked his tongue out, picking up the little detonation link with his sticky fluids. Slowly and deliberately, he drew the part into his mouth and swallowed it with great relish. In the throne room upstairs, Jabba and his court paused in their reverie just for a moment as an anguished howling filled the hallways. Then laughter and music reigned again. As his own brain was being placed in a nutrient-filled jar, Bobo mentally smiled as he heard the roaring laughter of his Boomer mentor echoing off the cavern walls. Yes, eternity with the marvelous intellect as a companion should be fun. The End <laughs>